section that we will discuss. Let us start with our discussion with one more uh, video down. So my ivermectin video has been taken down as well. And I did not even know. So someone, someone tweeted at me that, hey, your uh, ivermectin video is not working. And so I went and I saw, and it was the same issue. So if you see here, I actually can now see a third video that is going to go down as well because I cannot touch that. So I was trying to download all my videos before YouTube would just take them down. And what happens is that when YouTube takes down a video, they do not let you download it. So you can't have a record of that video anymore. It's just, it's confiscated from you. So because they did that with my other video, I wanted to download the rest of the videos before they did something. And uh, one more video is something I cannot work with. So let me show you. So here is my channel. And this is one video. Do you see this? Could Remdesivir help fight COVID-19? This video removed. This video was removed from YouTube. You, only you can see it because somehow this video has been removed for inappropriate content. And I've done the appeal. And then they have taken out this um, actually here. If you see here, this is another ivermectin. So look at the last one. Could Iver ivermectin help COVID-19? So they have taken this one down as well as video has inappropriate content. Mechanism of action of a drug is inappropriate content for them. And then what was interesting was that I was downloading all my videos so that they don't um, destroy them. And what happened was I could not download this video. Look, see the download is disabled. So it looks like this is also in that state where soon they are going to take this one down as well. And if you see here, I cannot do anything to this video. Everything is just, I can delete it forever, but I cannot do anything else. So that is the first uh, news <laughs> from me. Hey, welcome everyone, and let us continue our discussion. So today is a very fascinating um, topic, and that is <clears throat> asthma and COVID-19. I will touch on smokers and COPD as well in this discussion too. And uh, from tomorrow, please realize that I'm not going to name these videos as COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. I'm just going to say update on this date. That way, uh, that asthma and uh, COVID-19 or the, that name doesn't come in the descriptions or titles. So people are less bothered to go and just flag it by just looking at it. So please, from tomorrow, realize that I would not have the name, the title in a way that is easily comprehensible. So you'll have to join in to see what we're talking about, or you'll have to know one day before. Uh, but this is just unfortunate. This is like, you know, those dictatorships where um, people are censored enough that they have to hide in the basements and talk, even if these are fair things to talk because of the fear of the censorship and the punishment. So uh, this is what is happening here. Yeah, so uh, this is what is happening. We are kind of trying to hunker down now and talk about these things together. So let's, let's go ahead and continue our discussion. Interesting topic today. Uh, asthma and COVID-19. So right from the beginning, there you would see that CDC. CDC says that asthmatics are asthmatics are at a greater risk. However, the study that I'm going to present to you is done in Wisconsin in the US and they present that they are not at a greater risk and they have, uh, so we'll go through that study. So let me first explain CDC's point of view that why do they feel that asthmatics are at a greater risk? So We'll, we'll do the pathophysiology for the asthmatic in a second, but generally, let's say that this is a bronchus or trachea, for example, and let's say in here, this is the lumen of the trachea, and there is going to be a cartilage somewhere, and muscles and glands, so all that is here correct? 
and what happens is this lumen of the airway this lumen or the the pipe itself that pipe is coated by some mucus which is released by our mucus glands in the in this area so the there are glands that are making mucus here they release that mucus which goes and coats the surface of the trachea and the bronchi and the whole airway now this mucus secretion increases in asthmatics so folks who are, who have asthma especially allergic asthma that is and i'll explain that in a second what is that allergic asthma they have a larger quantity of mucus released and present in their airways what is the benefit of this extra mucus our body is trying to remove the irritants and keep them away so it is kind of washing them and, and trying to create cushions of mucus between the body cells or epithelial cells and the allergens so in that process it releases a lot of mucus which then causes the narrowing of the airway so now imagine if you already have not you if a patient already has asthma and their airways are narrow and it is difficult for them to breathe and top that off with coronavirus coming in and specifically attacking the lung tissue cells and causing inflammation which would further cause edema and congestion in these areas further narrowing the airways which then creates the risk of hypoxia which then causes the risk of uh, multiple tissue damages and so on so the manifestations of hypoxia would then appear this is why uh, cdc's believe that the asthmatics are at a higher risk however let's look at the study as well so this is cdc we have done that for the asthma discussion today what i would like us to know is that asthma usually is a balance or an imbalance that includes the following three kinds of issues that happen and they all may happen in varying intensities there is airway obstruction just like i showed you here that as there is more mucus produced as there is more edema produced there is going to become airway obstruction then there is smooth muscle hyperplasia so what happens is that the uh, asthmatic bronchi or the large airways they have smooth muscles that help them con con uh, contract or constrict or narrow the airway these smooth muscles become hyperplastic what does that mean they increase in number and imagine if you are bodybuilder and you have a lots of muscles you can now contract those muscles with more power so when we have a, a larger volume of the muscle number one that pushes inward and the lumen becomes narrow and secondly that that is a lot of muscle there and that can contract as well narrowing the muscles so that is the smooth muscle hyperplasia and hyperactivity so not only the number is increased but they are more active as well i'm very sorry to hear about the senior professor who died of the covid 19 and he was asthmatic so please realize that it's not probably just the asthma there are going to be other uh, co factors as well co morbidities too he may have uh, uh, cardiovascular issues or diabetes in addition to asthma and yes asthma itself can cause is is an issue this is a viral infections normally cause exacerbation of asthma and asthmatics normally have more infections so that is correct but i want to go through the study in the context of covid-19 and then the third pathology is inflammation and inflammation simply means that there is so much of the inflammatory cells response that once again there is edema and congestion and narrowing so all of these three mechanisms 1 2 3 eventually lead to narrowing of the airway and difficulty in breathing right so this is one 
the basic concept to keep in mind. The second important thing to keep in mind is that asthma can be atopic or non-atopic. What does that mean? Look, in the human population, there are 20% of the people who will respond to allergens, allergens abnormally, who would respond abnormally to allergens. What does that mean? Allergen, for example, a pollen is an allergen or the cat or dog fur, cat or dog fur or dander from these animals or dust or many other such things to which normally majority of the population does not react. Majority of the population just doesn't care. But 20% of the people have genetic makeup that gives them genes which makes them react to such things. So these folks are said to be atopic. So there is 20% of the people who would react to allergens to which the remaining 80% of the population does not react. So that is the definition of the atopic. So atopic asthma simply means that asthma caused by allergens which may be pollen and, and dust and dander and so on. There are so many allergens. Non-atopic asthma is asthma caused by other things than allergens. For example, some people get asthma attack with cold. Some people get asthma attack when they take aspirin. Some people get asthmatic when they are stressed out and so on. All of those that are getting asthmatic attack without without an allergen are called non-atopic asthmatics. Now, the study that I'm going to show you is saying that they have only studied atopic asthmatic. They are not sure if it is the same case for non-asthmatic, non-atopic asthmatics too. So this is an important distinction. If somebody is, for example, asthmatic to or reactive to cold, this message of you may be okay from COVID-19 may not be for them. Odors are atopic. So they are atopic because odor has the allergen, which when we receive that causes the re response. Okay, so so far so good. What we have discussed is that in asthma, there are three basic pathologies that result in narrowing of the airway. That is one. Secondly, we have talked about that asthma is of two types, atopic and non-atopic. This particular discussion is about atopic asthma. We are not sure about non-atopic. Thirdly, we have discussed that CDC has said, CDC has said that asthmatics are at a higher risk. So eventually we should listen to what CDC is saying. With this, the study that I have, I'm going to put this picture out here and then show you the study. I'm going to close this. The study that I have, so look at the study. Association of respiratory allergy, respiratory allergy, they use the word. Asthma and expression of the SARS-CoV-2 receptor. This is the study. This study is published, look at this, 4-9-2020. So last month, on 9th, this was published. I believe that this study is done in Wisconsin. So I'll tell you the basic gist of it, and then we'll go over it and understand the mechanism that they are, they are uh, proposing. They are saying that as allergic asthmatics and allergic patients are actually protective from COVID-19. So... The question is, why are they protected? And that is what they have done here. So what they did was, <clears throat> and remember, this is SARS-CoV-2 they are talking about. So it is not a previous discussion. This is a new discussion. It is a study here in the US. And what they have done is they took three groups of uh, controls, or sorry, uh, cases. And what they did was, or cohorts, I should say, and they looked at their expression of ACE2 after they were exposed to allergens, number one, 
and number two, their expression of ACE2 enzyme if they were asthmatic or if they were uh, allergic or sensitive to IgE. So what does this mean? Let me just explain it and then we'll come back to the study. Look what happens is this. Let's say this is our, um, if I, this is our airway. It is a closed system. I have kind of opened it up for our discussion. So I've just taken a part of our airway and we are looking at it. In, in our airway, there are epithelial, tall columnar pseudostratified epithelial cells. What does that mean? That means there are tall cells. These are these called columnar. And they're pseudostratified because the nuclei look like they are not in a line because there are smaller cells and there are bigger cells. <laughs> Thank you very much for the picture. I, I spent some time drawing these for us. So uh, drawing these for you guys. I, I really love it that on one end, YouTube is taking our videos down. But really, we don't talk about anything that is conspiracy. We do not talk about anything that is creating rumors. We do not talk about anything that can be damaging. Actually, I feel that what the discussions that I do help us stay protected from rumors and incorrect messaging that is everywhere out there. And not only I have the, those discussions, I actually show you the proofs. I show you the studies. So um, I, I do a lot of hard work to make sure that during this time, the community that is with me, the viewers, we share information that can make us more uh, stronger in the face of rumors and misinformation. So back here, this is the epithelium, this area is all epithelium. This is tall columnar. I would like you to look at this cell, this one, uh, this cell here. This is a dendritic cell, den dendritic cell. This side is the lumen of the, sorry about that. This side is the lumen. And in the lumen, there are mast cells. There are macrophages as well, but they are mostly down in the um, alveoli and they are present on the bifurcation of the airways. So I shouldn't call this macrophage. This is a mast cell, but there are macrophages as well. So I'll just make one macrophage here. So this dendritic cell is very important for us. Now, under this epithelium, under this epithelium is a basement membrane. So all of our cells, normally they like to sit on a surface. So this, this is a surface, we'll call it a basement membrane, and then the cells will be pasted on the surface like this, right? So similarly here, there are cells which are sitting on this green basement membrane. Then outside of the basement membrane, we have lamina propria, which has many kind of cells and it has fibroblasts and it has collagen fibers and elastic fibers. Plus what is of interest to us is there is T helper 2 cells here, there are B cells here, there are mass cells here, and eosinophil and neutrophil may come in later. <laughs> so Anne says that exactly. Maybe YouTube will make JAMA and Najam. Yeah, so it looks like they, they have some weird way of uh, assessing. And if we are fighting with the AI, then that is even more sad that now these big companies have the genies, which are called AI, and now we humans have to fight these genies to convince them that we are okay. So, so let's see what happens. So this, this is the lamina propria. Outside of the is then the muscle layer, and these are smooth muscles, and then outside of those are glands that are making mucous membrane. Glands can be dispersed in the other parts of this uh, structure as well, but most abundantly they are present here in the, uh, we call it submucosa. And there are, of course, blood vessels present in this area as well. This is the basic structure. Now what happens is, imagine if we get, so this is what I'm going to now connect to COVID-19. The Thank you very much, Barbara. Um, appreciate your support. So let's connect it to COVID-19. This study that we are seeing they are saying that we are finding that people who are allergic, allergic, who have respiratory allergies and asthma, and again, they say that 
allergic asthma, atopic asthma. They're not talking about non-atopic. They have more expression of ACE. So actually they have lower expression of ACE2, lower expression of ACE2, which in their point of view, make the patient less prone to the attack by SARS-CoV-2 and to the prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 within us. So let's see. Now let's say there is a pollen that we inhaled that came in with our respiration. This is the when we are a child and we are very young and the first time the pollen came in, that pollen is going to go and get attached and be taken up by the dendritic cell here. Once the dendritic cell takes up this pollen, it is going to then let the cells underneath look at the pieces of the pollen as well. So let's say a piece of pollen has come down here. This is a T helper 2 cell. And we have done immune discussions, immune system discussions so many times that here is a antigen presenting cell. In this case, let's say a dendritic cell. Then there is the T helper naive cell, T helper naive cell, which is zero. And in this case, in case of asthma, there is the T helper one, T helper two, I should make it up here. T helper two cell that becomes active and that is connected with the allergen. T helper two cell would then release interleukin four and interleukin five. So this is the pathway we are looking at. Eventually that would cause the B cell to release immunoglobulin E. That immunoglobulin E will go and sit on the mast cells. This immunoglobulin E will sit on the mast cell and become receptors for that allergen for the future. So in the future, when that allergen comes and attaches here, that would cause the mast cells to degranulate. So these are mast cells to degranulate and cause asthma. So that is what we are looking at. But we are looking at it in an airway structure here. So when the allergen comes in, I'm going to make the allergens black just so that it's easier to differentiate them. So when the allergen comes in and attaches to T helper 2, so now we know that how would that attach to T helper 2? There may be an antigen presenting cell here, which may be dendritic cell or macrophage or something else. Now the T helper 2 cell would then become active and it would release interleukin 4. And once interleukin 4 is released, that would cause the B cells to become to do class switching. And they would do the class switching for in, in favor of immunoglobulin E. This is where the basic problem is. This immunoglobulin E is going to go and get connected on top of I mast cells. So the mast cells are here. It's going to get connected there. There is one more mast cell here. So immunoglobulin E is now stuck on the surface of the mast cells. This is called the mast cell priming. Before this, mast cell did not know what to do. They didn't have the receptors on them. These immunoglobulins will act like receptors for them. And when, now that they have receptors, when, <coughs> sorry, my apologies, I am suffering from allergies as well. So when these allergens would connect to two consecutive or two nearby immunoglobulin E's on a mast cell, that would cause the mast cell to degranulate or to release its cytokines, release the substances in it. Now, once again, keep in mind, bronchial obstruction is one part of the pathology. Inflammation is another part. And smooth muscle hyperplasia and, over, and overreactivity is another part. So let's see if that can be done here because of these inflammatory reactions. So number one, mast cells are going to release le leukotrienes C4, D4, E4. That is lipooxygenase pathway, but not important here. Just this that it releases leukotrienes, which will work on the cells here, and it would work on the blood vessel, and it would work on the glands. When it would work on the smooth muscle cells, it would help them become active. It would help them become hyperplastic, that is, increase in number. So that is one part done. Can we increase the smooth muscles? Yes. Number two, when these leukotrienes are working on the blood vessels, they are going to cause the blood vessels to kind of become more swollen, and there is going to be permeability in the blood vessels. 
which would allow the fluids to ooze out. So now we are getting a congestion and edema of the airway. When the same things would work on the glands, glands are going to produce a lot of mucus because glands know that some irritant is here. That mucus is going to go into the lumen of the airway and get stuck there. So some mucus is fine, but extra mucus is going to cause bronchial obstruction. So now we have bronchial obstruction because of mucus. We have bronchial obstruction because there are extra smooth muscles which are going to contract and cause narrowing. And we have bronchial obstruction because the blood vessel is oozing out the, the fluids and that would cause congestion in that area. And that is the edema in there. So all of that is now causing airway narrowing and congestion and difficulty in breathing for the patient. Then what happens is, in addition to this, the mast cell, sorry, this T helper 2 cell also releases interleukin 5. Interleukin 5 activates the neutrophils and eosinophils especially. And this can happen about a about 24 hours later. This is why asthma can be in two phases, acute phase and then the uh, next phase. So the acute phase is right away as soon as the allergen comes in. The next phase is when about 24 hours later and, and it can continue for about 48 hours. So in that, in that second part of the asthma, neutrophils are the major players. What they, sorry, eosinophils and neutrophils. This is neutro. And this guy is eosinophil. Eosinophils are a major player. What eosinophils do is when they become activated by interleukin 5, they release a protein. They release many proteins, but important one for us is major basic protein. That protein causes destruction of the epithelium. So now we have destruction and inflammation at the airway surface, which is horrible. And then secondly, they cause inflammation in the local area, which in turn is going to cause smooth muscle hyperplasia, congestion, and the production of mucus. So this is in general how asthma works. Now the, the interesting thing, if you take this problem, this inflammation going on, and then top it off with some sort of bacterial or viral infection, which increases the inflammation in this area, then you can see that asthmatics are going to be at a higher risk. However, here is what the study found out. They found out that in case of allergic asthmas, this is the study, if I can just quickly, very quickly read this. See, it says no asthma, no IgE sensitivity. What does that mean? See here, this IgE, asthmatics are incorrectly sensitive to IgE against environmental factors. 80% of the population does not react to them and does not produce this IgE and is not sensitive with this IgE, but 20% are. And then there is a varying degree of sensitivity. Some children develop milder case of asthma and some develop severe case of asthma. So that sensitivity of IgE can be higher. So what they have done here is that the more sensitive a person is to IgE, a child, the more um, possibility of asthma is in them, but lesser expression of ACE2. So this sentence is the life of this whole topic today. So look at this diagram first. Asthma plus minimum IgE sensitivity. And if you look at this box, this is showing the expression of ACE2. Then Next one, asthma and low IgE sensitivity. And you'll see this box has been a little below. So that is also a little lower expression of ACE2. And then asthma with medium IgE, even lesser expression of ACE2. And then asthma and high expression of IgE, very low expression of ACE2, ACE2 enzyme, which is used by COVID-19 to get into our cells. Similarly, if you see this side, Asthma, no asthma, no IgE. This is the normal, you can say, expression of ACE2. Asthma, no asthma and plus IgE sensitivity, lower expression of ACE2. Asthma and no IgE sensitivity, more expression of ACE2. So it seems to be IgE sensitivity, asthma related to allergies. They are protected. 
asthma and IgE sensitivity, lower expression. So this is in the children. Then what they did was, so let me see if we, we are clear on this. The conclusion their study said in children, the one who have asthma and have IgE sensitivity, they have lower expression of ACE2 enzymes. And lower expression of ACE2 enzyme is protective against COVID-19. So they are at a lower risk. Then they did another study with the with adults. And they have a similar outcome in there as well. What they did was they had adult volunteers. They exposed them to cat allergens and they exposed them to environmental allergens. And within eight hours to 48 hours, ACE2 receptor density reduced on their cells. Can you imagine this? Within eight to 48 hours. So if you see here, this is an adult, this is baseline, this is the expression of ACE2 receptors on their cells. Now, in the case of uh, lungs, where are the ACE2 receptors present? Uh, if I come here, again, let's say this is a this is an alveolus. Of course, ACE2 receptors are present, uh, or enzyme is present on our in our is um, pharynx, in our mouth, in our nose. That is why the virus is sitting there. Then in our uh, respiratory system as well. But ACE2 are mostly present on. Let me actually bring it here. See these epithelial cells, the apices of these cells that peaks of these cells have ACE2 on them. This is where the coronavirus binds and then goes into our cells. That is one area. Second, ACE2 are present. Can you imagine this? They are present on these alveolar, uh, on the macrophages as well. So ACE2 is here too. Then in the alveolus, do you know that we have those type 2 pneumocytes and then we have type 1 pneumocyte? I'm sure that you know that. Do you know that type 2 pneumocytes are usually isolated? They do not like to be with their friends. So they are usually just one. They are the most abundant ones in the alveoli, but still they like to stay alone. So these are type 2 and they have ACE on them, ACE2 as, on them as well. Alveolar macrophages also have ACE2 on them. So all of these places have ACE2. And when a patient is allergic, when a person is allergic, these ACE2 get down-regulated. The quantity, the volume, the density of the ACE2 is reduced. That is what this study is telling us. And what they're saying is that once that density is reduced, that means it is less easy for the virus to enter our cells. So here, baseline, then post uh, cat dander, and then the environmental factor. And if you see here, this is the allergy. Within eight hours, ACE2 expression is reduced. And then here also, within 48 hours, this expression is reduced. Then if you see here, baseline, post-bronchial allergen challenge. So they gave them the challenge. And within eight hours to 48 hours, their um, ACE2 expression was reduced. So this is a very, very interesting thing. According to this study then, Patients of asthma are actually at a allergic asthma, I should qualify, allergic asthma. And patients with allergies to IgE, allergies with IgE in respiratory system, they are at a lesser risk of COVID-19 infection. What this study says is that we cannot find out, we cannot talk about a topic asthma and they may be still at a higher risk. So this is one. Is this clear so far? I'm going to switch the topic to smokers and COPD. So uh, I'll answer that question in a second. Let me just quickly show the study for. So this is the study here. This is smoking upregulates angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Smoking upregulates COPD. Patients have greater density. Except, so asthma is COPD as well. But asthma is separated now in this discussion. So COPD patients have a greater amount of uh, ACE2 receptors in them. 
smokers also have a greater amount of phase two receptors in them. So this is that study here. You can actually look it up and read it. It's quite an interesting study. And they, they write it here. They're very proud. This is the first immunohistochemical human lung evidence for ACE2 receptor expression in smokers and patients with COPD. And what they have shown is compared to control, smokers and COPD have a higher amount of ACE2 enzyme. So I wanted us to kind of look at that as well. We can do a deeper discussion if we wanted. This is another study which shows that, uh, that the children who have higher amount of IgE sensitivity would have a higher risk of developing asthma and allergies. And then this is the study from China that showed that there is a higher risk to people with cardiovascular system then COPD, which includes asthma, and then diabetes, cancers, and immunosuppression. So from this study's point of view that came out from China, asthmatics would actually be at a higher risk. So I'll stop here from the screen sharing, and we'll just have a quick discussion. My takeaway from this is that on one end, there is an ob observation that asthmatics are at a higher risk. And the reason for that is that they already have narrowed airways and then viral infections or bacterial infections would further cause inflammation, edema, congestion, and narrowing by mucus production. So their risk is higher. That's one. On the other hand, the Wisconsin study, they actually ex um, explicitly studied the people who are allergic, who have respiratory allergies, and they looked at their ACE2 expression, and ACE2 expression was down-regulated, down-regulated. So they said that this is a protective um, uh, outcome. They want more studies to be done to see if asthmatics are actually protected or not. So that's what. Second thing is the smokers have a higher density of ACE2, which is not protective because ACE2 is the is the receptor for coronavirus. Similarly, COPD patients are also at a higher risk because they also have a higher expression of ACE2. So that is the discussion today. Oh, Carol, this is so sad. Um, this is very sad. I am very sorry to hear about that. And um, <laughs> a few days I was back, I was doing a discussion with some uh, medical students and young doctors, and I could not hold my tears because at this time, uh, healthcare professionals are seriously at risk. And then top it off with those weird political messaging, and, and it's just not the best. Yeah, so Carol, the question is, was asthma the comorbidity which caused the severity of the infection or not? So ACE2 is higher in smokers. This is just an observation in that study. They do not have a pathological mechanism yet that why did that exactly happen? So with this, I want to conclude this as well. I want to put a bow, a bow on it. Look, in my opinion, from this study, it makes sense that asthmatics may be at a lower risk. But I will request asthmatics to stay isolated and be cautious because they already have a, a an airway system that is already at risk of hypoxia. And then normally other viruses and bacteria can aggravate that situation. Let's take it as the same that COVID-19 would aggravate that situation as well. And further narrowing of the airway would cause further hypoxia that would cause further damage that would cause the virus to win very quickly. So I would recommend using uh, taking asthma as a risk factor. The study said asthma is not a risk factor. Actually, it is protective, allergic asthma. So this is where we are at. Tomorrow we'll continue. Please, uh, tomorrow I will not have, please, number one, share. Number two, I will not have a title that is very um, clear. I would not use the word COVID-19 or SARS-CoV, so uh, YouTube doesn't take it down. So just uh, just join. I would say something like update on March or May 6th, and we'll talk about things. Please uh, tell me the topic that you would like to discuss, and we'll go from there. So stay safe, everyone. Um, love you all. 
uh, respect you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Share this uh, discussion as well. And let us continue our discussion tomorrow. Does PPE work? Yes, PPE work. <laughs> I'll have to change the title and description. I'm not going to put these studies in there. I'm not going to put the description in there that is clear. So I'm just going to say, let's talk about antiviral effect of this thing. So I'm going to kind of remove as much of metadata as possible so they do not keep taking it down. So people will have to actually listen in instead of just looking at the title and saying, I don't like it. Absolutely, I'll keep my vitamin D up. And you should all keep vitamin D up as well. In UK, they have asked doctors and healthcare workers to keep their vitamin D up. So very good question, Meena. Uh, smokers, what they have done in this study is smoking of tobacco and smoking of the, uh, what is that, the vaping, the electronic or heat-based smokes, they all cause increased ACE2 expression. Patient has diabetes and asthma, how is to expression will be and how. So we have done that discussion in the past that diabetes actually have greater ACE2 expression. Asthma can lower the allergic asthma can lower the expression. So there may be a balance. <coughs> Excuse me. There may be a balance. So I think it's going to be case to case. But diabetics have other reasons as well for being at risk, at a greater risk. So I would actually take asthma, diabetes, heart issues. Um, cancers, immunosuppression as very seriously and stay away and keep your patients isolated as well. Tell them as well that even if you're asthmatic, here is a study that says you're protected, but no, stay isolated because in my opinion, there is damage in the lungs and they are at risk. You are very welcome. Okay, so I think, thank you very much, FN. And let us then break today. Is ACE2 distributed in all organs? So very good question. ACE2 is present in abundance in kidney, intestine the most, then second most lungs and heart, and then yes, everywhere else, including brain as well. This is why the COVID-19 issue is not just the lung issue. It causes kidney damage. It can cause brain damage. It causes GIT symptoms, as we all know. It causes pneumonia and ARDS, as we all know, and it causes cardiovascular issue. Somebody asked me that it is a blood disease. So please realize cardiovascular issue and the hypercoagulability, the relation is that vascular damage because of inflammation results in hypercoagulability. It is the coagulation or thrombi forming which are trying to repair that area. So the COVID-19 directly is not a hypercoagulable causing or hypercoagulating virus. It is, it causes damage to the cardiovascular system and that huge all vascular system damage would then cause thrombi formation, embolus generation, and that is what is the hypercoagulable state. So that is a consequence. So COVID-19 itself is not a blood uh, virus. It is a cardiovascular damaging virus. It is an ACE2 loving virus. Okay, so there is a question that do some research on dentists will do. ACE2 is then is the same as ACE2 receptor. Could you please? Yes. So when I say ACE2, it is actually an enzyme, and I have done that discussion many times. But it is a receptor for coronavirus, and that is why we call it ACE2 receptor. Generally, it is an enzyme. It converts angiotensin two into angiotensin one to seven. So, so I many, many times. Some, what would you like? Summary is very simple. I feel, I, my opinion, asthmatics are at risk. There is, a, there is a data from China that says asthmatics are at risk. CDC says asthmatics are at risk. There is a study from Wisconsin that says, no, the ACE2 are down-regulated in asthmatics, so they are protected. Smokers are at risk because ACE2 is up-regulated in them. COPD patients are protect, uh, at risk because the uh, ACE2 is upregulated in them. That is a summary of the talk. So how about warm shower following the cold 
water just for two minutes. I don't know that, uh, you know, that people who are allergic and their mast cells are angry mast cells, they can actually respond to the temperature variation and degranulate. They can actually trigger allergies. So I'm not sure how would that help. Um, I had a CT with con contrast which showed no thrombus, but my hemoglobin is very low. I'm not sure how to get that up. That's a, a very specific question. I cannot in you know I cannot provide opinion to one person. Uh, I'm not your doctor, so my apologies. Please talk with your doctor. So thanks so much for today's lecture. How does corticosteroid used to manage asthma could affect? So that's a very good question. They actually talked about it. The corticosteroid. Here was the discussion. Corticosteroids that are used in the lungs are okay to use because they're not going in the blood vessels and they're, they're not becoming systematic or systemic. The corticosteroids that are contraindicated are the systemic injection of corticosteroid for serious or critical cases. That has nothing to do with the taking puff. For example, I take puff nowadays, I have allergies. So I take, take puffs, although I don't know if it is steroids or not. So steroids that are used in puffs for the airways and asthma are totally fine, they're safe. Still confused about ACE2, about ACE inhibitors and ARBs. So see, that is the thing. If you are taking ACE inhibitors and ARBs, that, according to some studies, upregulate the ACE2. And we say we have both, both kind of messages now. On one end, we say ACE2 causes the virus to enter our cells with more ease because of higher density of receptor availability. On the other end, we say that ACE2 is also anti-inflammatory. So when the disease becomes serious and critical, ACE2 density actually helps. So I would use it the same way, that as much as ACE2 upregulation causes a risk for the disease, I think it is protective as well and prevents from becoming serious or critical. This is a study that I think is worth doing. Some, some folks should do this study. Okay, so say not mean cause of protection regarding allergy asthma. Okay, so what to do about this COPD patient with COVID? Uh, so, of course, if she's already, uh, if he's already in the hospital, then the hospital folks are going to take good care of him, but they just have a higher density of ACE2, so they are at a greater risk. Plus, they are at a greater risk because they already have a lung system that is not functioning correctly, so virus can easily destroy it. But if they are in hospital, I would look towards the hospital that they would, uh, I hope that they would manage him well. Very good. So thank you very much, guys. I am going to download this video right tomorrow before this gets taken out as well. But please do me a favor in the meantime, please share it and maybe like it as well. I've never asked you any of you to like and subscribe. It looks very salesy to me. I do ask for sharing, but maybe if you like it, then there these AI genies and people would not bother too much by trying to take them down. All right, thank you guys. How about the study in France that less smokers died from COVID-19? So um, I think that it's not about the less smokers. I think it's about the nicotine patch. Nicotine patch is a different situation that is not directly causing anything to the airway. It is this study that I showed is about the smokers and vapors that are using, that are irritating their, uh, their airway uh, cells. Thank you. Have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow.